let's talk about people uh, can make requests. Sure. Uh, I know personally I've had some um, friends have sent, uh, whether it's uh, an old picture, um, a dog, right. you know, anything like that. What, why don't you uh, hit on that, kind of what people can do if they're interested sure. in having something like that done? Yeah. And then also what's the, like, the craziest um, request you've ever had? Crazy. Like any okay. nudes or anything, you know, like nothing. <laughs> I had nothing one crazy. person joke with me that they wanted uh, something like that done <laughs> of a of their significant other, and and uh, that didn't. I I think it was more of a joke, but it was also kind of like, you yeah, we're we're probably somewhere. not. Yeah, we're not gonna probably do that. Um, but uh, well, we aren't going to do that. But it was uh, um, as far as uh, you know, people reaching out in regards to. Uh, Paintings, you know, I paint pretty much almost anything. The only thing I tell people is I don't paint hate. So anything that can be interpreted as hate, whether it's whether that's the intent or not, right. you know, um, you know, I that's I don't, you know, I won't do anything like that. Um, but uh, as far as almost anything else, you know, I painted motorcycles and dogs and cats and you know and babies and you know sports. adults and sports and you know i i pretty much i look at it all as like a challenge of like being able to take you know i pr i paint oil and acrylic but predominantly acrylic um taking those tools and those those materials and seeing what so you know i really you know a lot of times people will have niches that they do like they they just kind of do this thing and i learned early on from my dad like working construction is that if you just want to be a framing carpenter or you just want to be a finished carpenter, then when that finished work is gone and you don't know how to pour concrete and you don't know how to build decks and you don't know how to do rough frame, you don't know how to do drywall, you don't know how to do any of these things and you're going to limit your work drastically. But if you know how to do a lot of those things, even if you're stronger in some areas, other areas than you are in others, the more diversified that you allow yourself to be, the more steady your work will be over a long time. And a credit to him, you know, he's been in construction for over 40 years in his own business. So um, I think I apply that same principle, you know, to artwork in the sense that what I like to do is like if somebody reaches out to something that I've never painted before, I'll, I'll say, okay, here's something maybe like similar, I'll draw a connection, you know, so if it's a building or if it's something, I'll say, hey, take a look at this work and if you like my style, then I'll absolutely, or if you have another artist kind of style, I'd be willing to try it out and see, mm -hmm. uh, not to copy that other artist's work, but just to, to say like, oh, you know, can you do it with this kind of brush stroke or something like that? And it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a, a shot. But just being straight up with people, I think just being honest with people, I think I've heard you say in one of the other podcasts that, you know, you treat people like your family, you know, like you you know so when somebody reaches out to me because they have a, a memorial portrait or they lost a pet like autumn my wife and i lost like our our dog baxter a couple years ago and oh my god i mean it crushed me like crushed me you know crushed her too and so like when people reach out like you know regardless of whether i get the job or not like the compassion point of talking to them saying like not just like oh boom pet portraits are x amount of dollars you know whatever it's like hey i'm really sorry that this is happening and it's an honor that you reach out to me even if even if i don't get the job like the fact that you thought enough of my work or whatever that you reached out you know so um you know i think treating people like you know, like I said, like their family or in, in, in a human quality to that, to where uh, you just don't keep it so, you know, business all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so yeah, I mean, in terms of like what people reach out to, like I pretty much will do just about anything. I mean, as far as uh, uh, in that regard. And as far as strange paintings, um, nothing crazy. I did have something interesting here not that long ago. Um, and I believe it'd be, I'm not going to share names, but sure. it was a mutual friend of ours, I believe. Uh, and she had reached out um, and her aunt was uh, terminally ill on hospice and she could no longer go home. And her, the, what she wanted to do was sit in her backyard. And so my friend sent me pictures of her backyard, like all her like kind of yard ornament yeah. stuff or whatever. And her backyard, uh, not criticizing, but it was not, it wasn't looking over a lake. It wasn't, I mean, you'd look out and there was some kind of industrial buildings in the far distance and there was telephone poles and there was like, but she, it was her little oasis, mm -hmm. like where this was. And yeah. she had her yard ornaments that had an, 
my friend told me about what where those came from, who they were from, and it was a it was a patio that was like it was probably I'm guessing maybe ten foot by fifteen foot concrete slab, and this is what the patio was, and the viewpoint was kind of I did it as a point perspective, and I painted all these things in it and made it, and then it, like again the backyard was nothing crazy, um, but there was it was it was a painting that was would have been hard to get a photo of to encapsulate all that was or to, to encompass all that was there so I think by you know that was the reach out of the painting was is like can you get this all to fit in here and so I did this and um, well first the timeline I did not have time to do this and oh man I he got to working on me so I was like okay <laughs> So I called her back and I was like, look, I can, uh, let's do this. Like, I'll, if I got to take off work, I'll take off work. But, you know, time is of the essence. And, and I can't always do those kinds of things. But, you know, I do try when I, if I'm able to, because just out of the human compassion factor. And again, the honor that somebody's reaching out that thinks enough of what I do to have something like this. So anyway, um, I was able to knock it out in a short amount of time. And luckily it was able to be delivered to her. And over the course of, unfortunately, she has since then passed away, but she did get the painting uh, several weeks before she passed. And uh, she, uh, my f friend had texted me and told me how all the people that were like coming to her in hospice care, she was telling them how, you know, her niece had a friend of hers paint this and this was her. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh my God, it was just so... And, and all of those kinds of things are, are a huge honor to do, you know, but it's, uh, but it, what was so unique about this one is, is most of the time those honors are like honoring somebody. So you do a painting of somebody and this was just a simple backyard. It was a very mm -hmm. simple, clean, neat backyard, but it was nothing extravagant. And this was somebody's like oasis. This was their paradise and, and they could no longer. So I, you know, part of what started working on me is like me sitting in my studio with my daughter right in the next room, maybe here and my wife in the other room. That's my perfect place. And the idea that someday I'll go there and I won't be able to go back. Or if I was told that I couldn't go back, mm -hmm. I mean, and so to be able to provide that was just you know, of all the rewards that I've gotten in terms of, you know, financial or, or whatever, I mean, those kinds of things, it's like, what a unique opportunity to be able to do that for somebody. It's unbelievable, unbelievable, right. you know? And um, so, I mean, that, that probably maybe took a different angle than what you're reaching for, but no, that, that's uh, cool, though. but that's I mean, really, it was Have you crazy. thought about selling that type of art online where people would be able to upload a photo of someone you would, you would, uh, the person would choose the sizes of, of pictures that they would sure. want, and it, you would draw and ship it to them. Because I think there is a market on that. Especially oh, there, with there that is. Passed away. Yeah, I think the the trouble comes. Oh, um, the trouble and the challenge comes is that, you know, like for instance, for me, you know, like I'm a one man operation. Yeah. You know, like. So when I, you know, like I've just recently hired a private shipping company to ship some really large works um, that can't be shipped to UPS. Okay. But, you know, like, but I, uh, but I, you know, I build my own crates. I calculate my own shipping. I'm giving my own quotes. You know, I'm buying my own materials. I'm, you know, doing the whole <clears throat> thing, which is fantastic. But it, it, you expend a ton of energy in that mm -hmm. way. And so um what's always a struggle for me because I always hate to turn things down and that's really really hard for me to do especially after having so many years where you were just like oh please please anybody you know like I'll paint anything <laughs> just whatever so I mean when you get to the point so I 100% I agree um, I think the the hardest thing is is and one thing that I delayed getting a website for for such a long time is that you know, I've been fortunate enough that Facebook and in itself was enough to keep up with. And mm -hmm. then you compound, you know, like Instagram and then just word of mouth and inquiries and then now a website. And I mean, it, it's and like all of us. I mean, you got your Instagram, you got your messenger, you got I have two emails and, you know, mm -hmm. you got text messages and you got voicemail. I mean, you got six different avenues. Plus, you know, I work another full time job and then this has became a full time job and I'm trying to be the best dad I can right. and best husband I can. And it, it's it's a it's a trick. I mean, and a lot of people and I, again, not to be boastful, but they say, well, how do you do all this stuff? And it's like, you know, the desire to do these kinds of things doesn't come easy. Like, I mean, it, it's it's getting up at five o'clock in the morning to do something on a painting so it'll be ready 
So that way I can still be around for when my daughter gets up and then I'm not interrupting that time or whatever. And it's, you know, it's eliminating cable and it's eliminating all other distractions. It inhibits your social life and various Mm -hmm. things. I mean, you know, sometimes I think when you're driven to do certain things, I mean, you know, what people don't see is the sacrifices that you make in order to do those kinds of things. And again, there's plenty of people making tons of sacrifice out there that aren't getting any kind of the the recognition or various other things. So I'm, I'm not trying to sound like I'm extraordinary in that respect by no means, but, um, I'm just saying that it's, um, you know, some people think certain things are easy and it's like, uh, you know, none of this is, is been easy. I mean, it, yeah. and there's a lot of years that there was no recognition and there was no, you know, none of that kind of thing. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, to, to go back to your question, I think it's just a little tricky. Um, okay. the more you open yourself up because there, you know, I had thought about that, about doing, you know, memorial portraits. I thought about doing veterans portraits, but you know, so all of a sudden, if I get a hundred inquiries, it's like, how long am I, I mean, right. it, hypothetically, not to mention to give a hundred quotes, and then to try to get deposits and try to get, you know, and most stuff that local, I try to keep it pretty relaxed. Most of the time, if it's somebody I know or I know through somebody, you know, a lot of times I'll be, you know, won't worry too much about a deposit. I'll only do a material deposit. But you extend it beyond, like, you know, the local situations, then I have to require a deposit. And then you got... And then once people pay you money, sometimes then they're like, so when, when is this happening? When is this happening? Even if you tell them it's like, it's going to be three months, it's like a month and a half goes by and they're like, so where are we at? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, it's, we're not there yet. Right. You know, kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. yeah and that, and uh, I mean, I don't, I understand. I mean, people are excited and I'm glad they're excited, but you know, it's a, it's a weird thing to navigate. And then when you're on your own business, you know, you, you know, I, you, uh, you know, not people don't have to subscribe to this, but I mean, you know, even when I've had bad interactions, which it luckily have been few and far between, but there's a couple of times I've been stiffed on paintings and things like that. Um, you know, I don't turn to Facebook and social media to air that out. Yeah. You know, I don't, uh, I don't, I'm not, you know, anybody that chooses to do that, I, you know, to each their own, you know, in that respect. But you know, there's, there's moments like that, that you kind of just have to say, okay, you know, as frustrating as it is, as much as you want to tell the world, like what just happened, you know, a lot of people are getting a lot of raw deals all the time and, and nobody really needs to hear about that. And and also too, it's, it's the few bad apples that spoil a bunch in that respect. So there's too many good interactions that I have to, uh, to, uh, you know, inundate, you know, social media with, with my, well, just wasting time and energy. Yeah. Well, and also too, I think it's one of those things where for me personally, I want people's interaction to me to for with me and my business to be, you know, a positive one. Even if they don't hire me, like that's okay. Like there's no there's no harm in asking a question, an inquiry. There's no foolish, you know, thing like that. I mean, the only thing that gets a little disheartening is if 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 we're moving forward on this, you know, you know, you don't have to, you know, like until we're committed. And most of the time, I reach out, give a message or phone call before I get ready to start and say, hey this is still, we're still a go just to make sure there's no change of feelings or anything like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I want to keep it relaxed. I want to keep it enjoyable and fun. And, uh, I want people to be equally as excited to get the painting as I am to do it. And so I want to keep that, you know, keep that good relationship. And then, you know, if you're in business and you're not trying to create a relationship, that's going to be a sustainable one for an over, you know, and, and, uh, and not adding a humanistic quality to your interaction, you know, and trying to be robotic about it. I mean, I don't know what the the statistics are, but I mean, for the energy that it takes to get a new client, you know, compared to, to holding on to an older one, you know, that's just common sense, you know, as far as that goes. And it's just, I think in my nature to try to, you know, I want to have pleasant interactions. I don't want to waste time with a lot of negative, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, negative things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, good, man. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if we're, uh, how we're doing on time or yeah. if you want to throw I just, in I just had one last thing. You mentioned he did the La Cantinita wall. Is that? So yeah. I did that with Joshua. Let me be clear. The, I, so they have several paintings in their okay. business that, that I've done independently. Okay. But Joshua Dixon and I. Uh, Dixon's Super a, talented yeah. uh, graphic designer, right? Yes. And, and he's also a painter too. But um, he and I have a, you know, it's, I think it's rare in the art world that you can find two people that can 
work together, but he and I are not only good friends, but we work well together. And when it comes to the kind of the mural stuff, we've kind of got an, uh, you know, an understanding that we kind of stay in our lanes. That doesn't mean that I couldn't do, I, I can't do the digital stuff that he can do, but obviously I could design something or yeah. whatever. And it's not that he can't do painting. I mean, cause he's a great painter too, but, um, the idea that we kind of, you know, when it comes to working together on that, we got an understanding too, that we could also work independently if it's a situation that, mm -hmm. you know, where to call, but we also, you know, are good enough friends that we're not going to compete against one another. So if we have a situation that somebody's reaching out to one of us and reaching out to the other, you know, we just got a pack that we'll call each other up and we work together and whatever. And if something happens, we got a smaller gig or something where it just doesn't call for the services of the other one, you know, where that doesn't really work in and there's no hard feelings there. But our biggest thing is to not compete with one another. And, and mm -hmm. when we do work together, it's a great time. I mean, he can do what he does and, and we just kind of price price that out in our own way he gets paid what he needs to get paid i get paid what i need to get paid and uh there's nobody that's dominating that situation or anything in in regards to you know making anything off the other one but mm -hmm. um so i but yes i i did actually do that i did the painting and the construction and he did the initial design and the other great thing with him too is is that um he values enough of what i do that if while i'm painting something if i need to make tweaks or i need to make adjustments because you know, something's not right, something doesn't feel right. Like in the Cherry Street um, piece that we have coming up, uh, and I won't disclose what that's gonna be, so it'll be a nice surprise, but there was some voids in the painting that I appreciate that he left there. So he didn't overly do something to where like it made my job like oh, insane. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then once I got a handle on the overall construction of it, you know, cause with my building background, and the way we do the murals, like normally, I, I, well, I build them and construct them and do all that kind of stuff. And I, obviously I do the painting, but that's out of a mutual understanding between him and I. But when I did that, um, I was able to take some voids that were in the painting and kind of inject some of my own mm -hmm. things in there. And he's great with that. And if I need to change a color or do something, you know, if it was something like major, I would consult him out of respect. But I mean, we just have such a mutual respect. And, and I think that's also unique in the art world too, because it can be a really kind of a, lonely sounds so cheesy, but I mean, it can be a world that like can be really clicky sometimes. And it can also be, you know, to where, you know, um, you're trying to make it and you're trying to figure out how to do something and you ask people and they're like, well, I don't know, you figure it out, you know, cause like I had to pay my dues, you know, right. whatever. And so that could be, and I'm not saying, and you run onto some fantastic people like Chris Dacalasa, I mean, Stacey Lotz, I mean, there's, uh, Janice Mars, um, at the, you know, there's just some fantastic, you know, there's, there's wonderful people, but there are also people that are kind of a little bit more closed mouth or they're kind of a little bit more standoffish and and uh, so uh, when you run onto somebody like Dixon and you're able to kind of work that situation out I think it's really unique and it's mm -hmm. a great opportunity I mean it's it's been great for both of us uh, not to speak for him I mean it's been great for me and he and I just in you know a great friendship has blossomed out of it which has been fantastic so that's, that's yeah, good man yeah but the that's other paintings nice. in La Cantanita like uh, I did one of Frida I did uh, Pancho Vio uh, I did several that are actually hanging in their bathrooms that uh uh you know that are and in there when it comes to that does the in that specific project does the owner of la cancinita tells you what her mind like what she's thinking or you just use your creativity and she trusts you to do whatever you want to uh you know um she, she actually um a little bit of both i mean as far as you know um uh lv and um Justin, it was main. LV was, you know, D Justin, I think, had more involvement with Pancho Villa because all the paintings I were doing of women, and I think he was like, we need to get at least one dude in here somewhere, or whatever, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So, but as far as, um, but they gave me the freedom to uh, paint, like, uh, well, actually, the interesting thing was, is with Frida Kahlo, the Frida piece in there there's an action style painting that I really like to do. And I normally don't do cold calls. I only do them once in a great while. And that's if I just have it in my head that I think, man, I think there's somebody that I think this person would maybe like this painting and I want to find it a good home. And so I'd done this uh, uh, artist women's series that I had done because I, I realized that I didn't know that many women artists, like even despite having gone 
it had an art degree, like there just wasn't that many that were taught that much. So I'd done this series and Frida, I did this painting of Frida in this action style. And so I'm thinking like, what am I gonna, you know, like I wanna find this a home. And, and I, I knew LB was, uh, you know, coming up with the La Cantonita. And so I reached out and just cold called and was like, look, I know we, we knew each other a little bit from the gym, like when her and Justin used to go, I knew Justin from way back, uh, you know, bar days kind of thing I've run into each other but um with LV I'd just known her from running into her at the gym and stuff at the time where we all used to go to the Y I still do but um she um uh, uh I just reached out and I said hey I know this is crazy you know no hard feelings if you're not into this and ironically um she had just ordered a print of Frida and she's like no I, I want the painting and so we worked out a deal and then after that, then it was like, and she reached out for another and another and another, and awesome. and that was fantastic. And then Dixon and I had the opportunity to do, uh, you know, and then she reached out to both of us to uh, actually, you know, credit her to starting that collaboration process between Dixon and I. And so we came to an early understanding of how we would, because my biggest thing is, is not that Dixon isn't capable of painting or that I'm able to design, but to me, like I think the benefit is to having one person do mainly the one thing and the other person do the others. To have two people paint on one project, then you get, you know, you want things to look cohesive. So mm -hmm. you want his design not to be interrupted by the things I'm trying to do in there, and nor, you know, whoever's painting mm -hmm. it to have two different styles of painting, even though you're trying to do the same thing, you know. And uh, but anyway, so uh, so she had reached out to those kinds of things. So it was it was a little give and take on both. And then I've had some other people. Um, reach out that have had specific, you know, very specific ideas of what they want. Um, but generally, like when it comes to businesses, they're, they'll kind of give me a general. And then after that, I can kind of take it from there. And, and uh, or we kind of look at the different kinds of work that I do and say, I kind of like this kind of style. And can you do this? And mm -hmm. yeah, so Good. Um, yeah, crazy fortunate to have had the opportunity. It's like 500 paintings in shipped to 27 states. It's, it's, I have a uh, painting in Tulum, Mexico. I had one that go, went over to a U.S. embassy for a while. And just uh, now the I was also involved in illustrating a children's book, the, the Silas the Great House Cat, with, who Janet Pogtoll had written. And that I've just gotten stats here recently that that's been shipped to like Poland, Australia, um, all these other kinds of things. So to think like these... Um, and my da my daughter and my wife actually got to be two models that were posed in that book, which was unique. And I got to hide my daughter's name in it three times. And so like, and my background history of going to Monmouth College, that's all in that book. And so in a little bio and to think that that's being shipped all the way around is just, mm -hmm. it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. And this all started with a broken <clears throat> Bob Ross easel. Like thinking, like, what right. am I doing? <laughs> you know, yeah, kind of right. thing, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. So, hard work pays off. Man. I feel real lucky, super lucky, and I, I just, I totally appreciate all of my. I mean, anybody that's ever even inquired about a painting, even if they haven't, you know. Of course, you appreciate the ones that have have followed through, but just, you know, it's everybody that's helped make this happen for me. I mean, in terms of like to make this thing that generates something, you know, it's all that kind of support. And, you know, uh, being recognized for trying to give back, you know, with the charity stuff. And I can't do that as much as what I used to do, but um, especially being, you know, being a dad now. Um, but, you know, all of that kind of support, family support, I just feel so, so lucky. And, and I just want to continue to, to serve in many of those ways to, to try to give back in that capacity, you know, um, because what I've been able to experience is very, I think very rare, especially for small communities and mm -hmm. things like that. And, uh, yeah. So I, I, I don't want it to go away and yeah, I hope it I never does. I don't think it will, man. I you've hope done not. A, you've done a great job. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I will speak for, um, the charities and all the people I know that your work is very much appreciated, especially when it helps out a great cause. But uh, even just having the art, uh, in the community and these businesses and in these households, uh, it's something to be proud of, man. Oh, I, so I, keep up I all, your, all your hard work. Thanks. I have no no question, no doubt that you will. Yeah. Very good stuff. Yeah. Thanks. And look Thanks forward so to, uh, to seeing you continue to grow. Keep it up, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you guys so much. I, I appreciate being here and having the yeah. opportunity to tell a little bit about that.